Let's see what we got in the mailbox today. Oh shit, check this out. From Tuck Upper to Mop God Mike. We'll see what what's in here. Hey, Bobby boy. have in here. I guess we'll have to open it up and see. It's like Christmas Day. There we go. Damn. Oh shit. Two st there's the stickers. There's the print. Man, check that out. Now that is cool. We got two of them here because we're going to do some artwork with these. Let's see. Oh, we got a note here too. The Mop God for the boys, dude. Thanks for supporting the dream and buying some prints. It's people like you that make me feel like what I do is worth it. The way I think is worth it and sharing how I feel. Anyway, keep pushing your version of the dream, brother. You! One love, Tuck. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Okay. That was cool. Okay, now we're gonna go, I think we should go a foot. See, when I lined it up, I got it to, to there. I don't know. I guess I should just cut it right in half. What do you think? You think I should cut it in half or just line it up like that? Probably in half. Just cut it right. Cut it right in half. Little nail out. Could probably use this for a part in the piece too, somehow. A little nail, you know. Keeps your nail down. For the dream. gonna cover that end of that cap like that, the top of the cap. I would have, I, I didn't, because of this was two feet, was just need to be out a little bit more. They put it like right like that. And these, these things are fucking so cool, man. So happy you brought this. I was actually, I've been thinking about these. I'm like, damn, where the heck do I even get something like this at? It's like so cool. I don't even know what they're called really. Just smudging. It's just called a smudge stick? Yeah, or, st or sage. Can you buy sage it stick? like on Amazon? Probably. It's like whatever the heck you want in the whole world is there. Alright, so, get this piece. Oh. 
Oh shit, I fucked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where we go, oh, that red line lining up. All right, boys, we got this working over here. We got this piece of art, me and the rap god over here. Little stack, make sure you follow his shit on SoundCloud because he's gonna be putting some new shit out and that shit is banging, straight fire. But this is what we got going on right here, right now with this frame and we're about to keep making that dream come true for every little boy and girl. You. Wake up, bad habit, nosebleed, jungle killer, the king. That might be the best one. shit too because I'd love to make an intro like Tux does when him and B. Cole did it when they were uh, like cutting grass and he's holding up the weed whacker and going bing 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 and he's smiling with his glasses on I'm like that's living the dream right there it's like that boy was like in that present in his moment he was living life and then we all experience that life when we watch his videos and then we're like damn I wish we could do that in our own life and then we go out and accomplish our dreams and that's how it keeps rolling and how inspiration finds its way from one person to another and the fire just keeps burning all the way to the next generation and that is truly the American dream. Mop God said it first for the boys. You. See this is not time wasting. Because we're creating something. We're actually doing something with our time to influence the next generation of dreamers. And really, it's, that's what it's about is the next generation. It's not about what you left here. The other people remember of what you left here. Because history always rewrites itself. But when you have people that remember your history, it keeps on telling itself. And everyone keeps talking about the mop god. They keep talking about Little Stack. They talk about Tucker F. Upper. They talk about Ben Gravy. They talk about the Amazing Hob. They talk about all the boys because that's part of our tradition. What made us who we are today. And we're the boys. <laughs> doing heroin again just when I put down the bottle so that I can finally win when rock and roll ain't enough to save your soul you keep going in and hopefully with all these sins you can still find a hole to pin I hope you find a hole to pin what's it mean to you the government issued heroin yeah, that's it's, what you're talking about right yeah I would just say that the government has this cycle of events that they set up and calculate and it's pretty much like it goes full circle like if you've ever seen these videos online where they have US troops protecting poppy fields in Afghanistan and in the Golden Crescent which is basically it goes through like three different countries it's where like 90% of the world's population of heroin comes from and they need poppies to make certain pills too which are actually legal but Either way, they blame basically criminals like the cartels and shit, saying that they're bringing the heroin here, but really it's obvious that it's the U.S. government because they're the only ones that have enough resources to pump that much heroin into our country. They put it on the streets, and they get people addicted to it, and then they arrest the same people that they got addicted to it through pharmaceuticals for having it, and the same people 
that run the government are the same people that own the pharmaceutical companies, are the same people that own the jails. So they're making money hand over fist in each process of the whole thing. So it's like, pretty much if you trust the government, you're just a full fucking idiot. And you should open your fucking eyes to what's really going on. Because like, a dope dealer on the corner has absolutely nothing to do with basically why people are fucking addicted to the shit. Basically the Taliban uh, has actually heroin, opium production outlawed and the only way that it got back into the phase that it is now is from the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan through the false flag events of 9-11 and it's all connected. So like if you look into it enough like before we invaded Iraq, Afghanistan, all these countries, the opium production was down to like 1% of what it was the next year because they would burn the fields. The government that was in control then, when the US government took control of those countries, they would protect the fields because they need the production of it to make all the different drugs that they pump into the US society and it's just fucked. So I think that like, by pointing a finger at, at people, here for doing criminal things like selling heroin is just stupid. The war on drugs is actually just a war, you know, like the police blotter we were just looking at, it's just a war on our civil liberties so they have the, you know, the excuse to search your house or arrest you for something that shouldn't even be legal to begin with. Because honestly, like, if you could buy heroin at CBS, there'd be like 1% of the overdoses that there is because they'd actually know that they're buying heroin instead of fentanyl. I don't know. It's just like too crazy that, you know, our friends and our family members are dropping dead over a calculated thing. And then, you know, they buy into society still, even though, you know, their mom died from it or their, their best friend died from it. They still go out and they get a nine to five job and pay into the system that really, you know, killed their family. I don't know just a rant really but it's all connected how did you get the idea to make it like the candle print like from Andy Warhol or actually I didn't even know who Andy Warhol was until I saw the movie exit to the gift shop is starring Banksy which they don't show him at all mm -hmm. in the movie. yeah but in my opinion he's the greatest living artist right now because of his message it really doesn't have anything to do with how good he is at art, the extent that he goes to show the world what's going wrong is a respect enough. What was that? Like a door. But either way, yeah, that's where I saw it. And I saw the print of the spray paint can first. Okay. And that's Mr. Brainwash. And that is another whole thing that shows how stupid art actually is. Not stupid because it means everything, but for you know someone to say that you're not an artist, but then someone like Mr. Brainwash selling pieces of art for over $100,000 in an auction proves that anyone can be an artist because it, it's an image. It doesn't have... To be a famous artist, you don't even have to be good at art. He never even made anything. He just came up with ideas just like Andy Warhol and got other people to actually do art to print them. But he's one of the most famous artists in modern history. So, like, it just proves that anything is art even an idea doesn't even have to be your own hand making it. Once you think a seed in your head, you know, grows and it turns into something amazing. But yeah, that's where I saw it first. And then I researched Andy Warhol and I actually went to the art museum in Philadelphia and saw a bunch of Andy Warhol's pieces, but it's just the condensed chicken noodle soup print made into a pill bottle pretty much. I mean, it's one of the most popular pieces of artwork ever. So I just copped it off of that and just stole it. Put everything that's basically popular stolen from somewhere else anyway. You made your own fire out of it though. Yeah. I tried to. And now we got a collab piece. Yeah, where is it though? It's at home. I didn't see it. You didn't see it yet. You'll see the video of it. That's what I wanted to <laughs> so how how did how did you actually make this piece? I actually went and tried to get Illustrator 
which is a an Adobe program, mm-hmm. and it costs like fifty dollars a month to have that. I just made ten bucks too from some kid, <laughs> which is pretty sick. But I was just like, fuck that, you know. I mean, whatever. Someone who ever made Illustrator deserves to get paid, but you can't be charging all that money for innovation. Like, it's pretty much stunting people that don't have money to, cause it, not to make something. So I just downloaded GIMP, which is an open office program mm-hmm. that is just free for everyone, and I made it on there. But I learned how to do Illustrator in actually community college. So that's how I made it. It's pretty easy. If you you know if you put your mind into something, you can create anything you want if you believe if you you know try hard enough. Anyone can. Anyone can make that print. It's not even hard. It's just about trying. You know, it took me a long time. But so how long did you like when you had the first dream of this piece till it actually got completed? Uh, I made a stencil of it first and that's a spray painted stencil and then I made the illustration online so I don't know it's probably like six months in between I didn't even I didn't think about it like that I just made it but you still had that seed and it came popped up and then finally accomplished the dream became reality well I think that well my aunt died of an overdose from doing fentanyl and it was kind of like you know she was never that crazy of a person so like she would have never done heroin if the pills wasn't weren't pushed down her throat pretty much from the beginning because like she got in a boat accident and shattered her whole ankle and all any of the doctors ever did was just give her scripts and it's like you know that doesn't solve anything except for just turning people into drug addicts. So like, I think that's where it hit home and I just made that because like, I I mean a lot of people I know have overdosed or I have any friends that died but no one that was that close to my life. You know, my, my aunt who like was there my whole life. So I don't know, it's just like, it doesn't stem from just someone going like smoking weed and then they go out and they're like, maybe I should buy some heroin. It's always starts with the pills. And, you know, that's legal. They prescribe people fucking pills all day, every day. And it's supposed to be okay, but then they arrest people for doing heroin. That's fucking retarded. It's the same thing. I don't know. I would say Big Pharma is killing our generation for sure. It's almost planned, too, because they want to keep people docile so they don't open their mind and think like me. Because if there was enough people that thought like me, society would not would cease to exist because nobody would believe in it and no one would buy into it. And there would be rioting in the streets. And it would just be a total collapse of control over the population. 